Hello and welcome to the August wrap up. Nobody wants to see me. Everybody is here for the charts and the graphs. So let's go look at stats. Okay, we're going to start right here. I've hidden everything from July. So we're only looking at August. As you can see, I had a DNF. I DNF'd meddling kids. I feel like we talked about that before if you were around for that. And the only thing that's left is the newest book that I just finished, Sinner's Saint by Kate Rudolph. And now it has been updated. And the reason that all of them are this purple color, except for the DNF, is because every one of them were able to be used in my Herkid. So I decided to not save my ABCs for just one book series. And so uh, everything fit into the ABCs over there. So I have a lot more stuff done on my Herkid, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to find out how my reading went in the month of August. So it might work if I kind of use me to cover it up. So I read 30 books exactly in the month of August. And what's funny about this is that I read 19 in the first half and 11 in the second half. And as you can see from those stats, I did a really good job of slowing down the last book that I read that um, Sinner Saint book took me four days to finish it and it was six hours on audio. So I was really going slowly and taking my time and doing other things during the day other than reading. So I'm going to move my face a little bit at a time so that we can see what's going on. First of all, this is for not just July, even though it says that this is for July and August. I have totally read in total, <laughs> totally read. 66 books, 21,956 pages, 645.75 hours with an average rating of 4.01. That's really good to have that high of an average rating, especially because I have been being more brutal is not really a word, just trying to be more accurate with what I am rank, rank, ranking, rating things so that my views, I mean, my average rating will reflect what I am, what I think about the books. So first, let's look at genres. Okay, so you can see up here, I have nine fantasy books that I read. That's 30% of everything was fantasy. Romance was 23%. Then historical fiction, which I keep saying is my least favorite genre, was 13% of the month. 13% of the month also was mystery, which I love, and I thought it would be higher. And then we have lit RPG. We know where that came from. Poetry, that was a book in verse. Horror, one horror book. What is the matter with me? 3%. One Christian book, one nonfiction book, and one science fiction book. So it's got all the genres that I usually read, but there's a lot of fantasy and everything else just kind of went down. Then you can see that the majority of the books I read were adult. I did have four young adult and two middle grade books. And then the publishers are kind of all over the place as well. A lot of independent and self-published. I love it that 13 out of my 30 books were either independent publishing companies or a self-published novel. So that's great. It's like 43% of what I read came from self-published or indie published, and that's great. Okay, now let's look at subgenres. They get a little more detailed. We have three romance, two suspense, and then one of everything else. So I had mystery, classic, dystopian, historical fiction, sci-fi, vampires, <laughs> fantasy, urban, Paranormal, Contemporary, Cozy, Historical, and Suspense. We already talked about Suspense. So, Historical. So, I had a lot of sub-genres. And I really like keeping up with these sub-genres. Because I feel like just because something's a fantasy, that doesn't mean that it's not something else as well. So, I really like that. You can tell, as usual, 27 of them were audiobooks, 2 ebooks, 1 paperback. Then the authors. Look how many new to me authors I had. 19 new authors and then 11 that I had read from before. But that is not 50-50. Not even close. All right, let's talk about the years that were published. Okay, right above my head. 
I had 20% of my books were published in 2021 and 10% in 2024. So that's so weird. Also 10% were in 2017 as well. 6% were in 2016. I just have been reading books from all over the place. The It's not even on here. Or maybe it is and I just can't see the slice. There was one book from 1946 and one book from 1977. In the midst of all the rest of these, I had those two books as well. All right, we're going to go this way now and talk about the series. 19 were in progress, which is nice, but that also means some of them are brand new <laughs> that I started. 10 standalones, 1 DNF. Let's go over here and actually look at the series. So we can see them right here. So the number in their series, like where they show up, okay? We had one, two, three, four, 14 were new serieses. That means there were only six that were not new. There is one series, The Unbroken by C.O. Clark, that I've decided not to continue with. So that's the only DNF series that I have. And it doesn't mean I won't ever continue with it. But for right now, I'm not putting the next book on my want to read list because I just didn't like it enough to keep going. Then you can see all the representation for LGBTQ was a lot higher this time. Almost everything I read... I realized I was blocking it. Almost everything I read was a novel with just two novellas, which means I read no graphic novels in the month of August. That's wild. And that's it, other than the thing that I love the most, which are the maps. So the first one we're going to look at is the world map. I had still 13 books set in the United States and quite a few set in England, but I had one book set in Australia, one book set in Brazil, one in France, and one in Italy. So we are definitely branching out from the U.S. and the U.K. And technically, I could count those books as being set outside of the U.S. or U.K. or Canada for the Herkiad. But I think I was counting those books for something else. So I don't know that I counted them there. Anyway, that part doesn't matter. Now, of the 13 books that I read that took place in the U.S., let's look at the states. Here we go. We still had the most in California. I feel like California and New York are big settings for them, but my second highest was Texas. Then we have Louisiana, Tennessee, Ohio, New York, Minnesota, and Oregon. So we got a little bit more spread out over here as well doing that. So I'm going to look at the maps, show you the maps for total so far this whole year. So this map doesn't change at all. We just have higher numbers. So there's been 31 books set in the United States. And there's been, I don't know how many set in England, but more. And then still one book in each one of these other countries. But the states get a little bit different. I still have the most set in California. But Texas has a lot. And New York has a lot. And then North Carolina and Colorado actually have more than one. And then all these light purple ones still only have one. But the map is filling up a little bit more than it was before. So I am keeping an eye out for when I hear about a book that's set in a different state. And I'm like, oh, let me grab that. So that's always something that you guys can recommend for me as well. If you see a state over here or a country that's empty, you can be like, hey, I recommend this book. So feel free to recommend anytime you see an empty state or an empty country in this wrap-up that you can um, tell me about. So that is everything. My, I love how this is looking over here. The totals are up here. As you can see, I read 36 in July and 30 in August. So I did read a little less, which is always a goal that I'm trying to do is read a little less. And it still looks like fantasy, romance, and mystery are the top no matter what. But anyway, that is everything for my August stats. I will check back in in the middle of September with the first half September stats. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.